Gotta get a little before shot here. This is the attic before we turn it into our Lego storage room. This is when being engaged to an engineer is helpful. He can go in and figure it all out. But I think we learned that you don't want to use plywood, but I think it turned out that uh, it's harder to cut the drywall. My big job was stapling the insulation and we have to wear the gloves and a mask because the fibers from the insulation just get everywhere. And ideally you also have some eyewear, especially when doing overhead because it can get into your eyes. I also stapled my palm because our stapler is like made backwards. It was really weird. Other than all of the injuries, it wasn't too bad. Michael is in the back trying to jerry-rig some pieces together. Here we go. We're pausing for the night. It's almost 11 p.m. So, definitely a good start. Got four more panels of insulation to do and the ceiling insulation. Michael had to go back home, so I did the rest of the insulation myself, and it wasn't easy. It was very heavy up top. I learned later that there's smaller pieces of insulation that I could have used. Ugh, so many lessons learned. But this is how I figured it out, uh, that, that I could do it, using my legs and hands to try and hold pieces up so they didn't tear the paper that's holding it together. And now you know why my mom calls me a spider monkey. <laughs> so next time Michael came back into town, we started working on the drywall for the front side of the wall. And we had to cut these little divots out of the drywall to go around the geothermal tubes there on the floor. It was a bit of a pain in the butt because the walls aren't quite straight and the flooring's not quite level. Um, it's, you find all of the inaccuracies when you're trying to add something. Get in there. I wish I had a video of us putting these ceiling pieces up. It's a lot of work for some Lego storage. But the Texas heat can really damage Legos. almost have a whole room that we built just to store Lego. <laughs> so we've got three bookshelves here. I've got three in the office with Lego on them right now. And then once we finish this back wall, we can put another um, bookcase back there and then we can put some on this side too. But right now we have a few more pieces to go. We've got to build out this part of the wall, one more part on the ceiling, and then this is not fixed in place yet because we have to do the ceiling piece first. Um, we figured that out on one of the others. So, lots of mistakes made, lessons learned, and uh, yeah, we didn't kill each other. So, uh, Michael and I know that, that we can do hard things together. <laughs> I think there were some frustrations, <laughs> but we got through them and uh, came out on the other side kinder. Can't go wrong with that, right? All right, we've got all of the storage in place. Got as much as I can fit on the shelves that are here. Um, we still have a little bit to do on the end, but uh, we're going to do all the cutting outside of the room so that we don't uh, get any of the dust on the Lego itself. So it's not pretty, but it is functional. 
and uh, now I can access all of the Lego sets. So that was the big deal. Um, all of these were stacked on top of each other um, in a closet very tightly, and now I can actually get to them when it's time to sell them. Hi, Ayla. Are you exploring? I know. You preferred it the other way. So yeah, the goal originally was to have enough storage that I could actually use the office as um, our Lego building room and put the Ren Fair and the um, modular city in there together. But it didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> we still have enough boxes in the office that I can't put the table with the Ren Fair in there yet. So you can see we still have the shelves here in the office. Um, hopefully I'll be able to move the at least one shelf into the attic. And we'll be able to use this space for our Legos instead of just storage. So I'd like to build the giant Harry Potter castle from all the little castle sets. Um, it's a rebrickable model, but I just have no space right now. So I'll sell some sets too. <laughs> That'll create some space. <laughs> so I did go through today and look at all of the Star Wars sets that we have um, to see if any were appreciated enough to sell. Um, I didn't get through all of the themes. I just started with Star Wars. I'm doing it a little at a time. I don't have a lot of time these days. But I found um, a few sets that we can list that aren't listed yet but a few more that still need to appreciate. So we're going to wait. Um, we made a lot of mistakes in the beginning and purchased a lot of sets full price, um, or we got double VIP points and gift with purchases. Um, so we already got the money back for those pieces, but not for the, the sets themselves. I'm still trying to see if we can double our money from the full price versus minus what we got from the gift with purchase. Um, but I might have to take into account those other pieces and go back through and see, okay, if we had to get three sets, the one gift with purchase had $30 is what we got for it. Take $10 off of the value of each of those sets. I haven't gone through those kind of calculations yet um, to see what it would be a reasonable doubling or if we're going to go in and try to just get a certain dollar amount back on certain sets instead of trying to actually double. That will be a lower percentage, but I'm still accounting for um, annual return on investment for our entire investment portfolio. That's the, um, I guess, the, the figure that tells me if the continuing this is worth it or not, um, because the money that I would be using for this um, would go into a, an IRA um, instead. So if we're not getting more than what my IRA is making, then it's not worth all the time, money, and effort that we have to put in to, um, to do this. So that's where we're going at it. Um, just wanted to give you a little update on the investment piece and you've seen all the work that we've done to store what we do have. We have the storage now, so we'll just wait until things are valuable. But I'm constantly looking at whether or not we want to continue doing it because it is a lot of work. Um, purchasing is easy now that I know how to find sales and using Rakuten and Honey and all of those. Um, it's still time consuming because you're always looking for sales. But it's not as time consuming um, as actually selling them. <laughs> and I know the people that have a lot more um, can go on Amazon and um, do the, you know, basically pay Amazon to do the work for you. And we're not quite at that level. Um, I don't know that I ever want to get to that level. Um, that seems like get less of a return and it seems riskier to me to have that um, just because it, you do have to put the money out of pocket to have Amazon store or um, doing the 
uh, the shipping for you. So anyway, I understand a lot of people may are very successful with that and it's probably just my fear that keeps me from wanting to do that. But at this point in time, not going to go down that road. I just want to sell on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Mercari. So wish us luck.